Hi there, Stealthy Unknown, aka Andrew Phil here, and I'm gonna have a little video here today for you since I found no videos online or on YouTube on how a three round burst mechanism works. What I have here is a simulation that I made of an M4. The mechanisms are almost true to life, almost true to life. There might be a few modifications for it to work in two dimensional, but the concepts are still the same. So as you can see, the bolt carry has been dropped, and the mode right now is in semi. Let me go ahead and extend the stock. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire semi-auto. So you can kind of see that when I pull the trigger, one round comes out. So that's your basic semi-auto. However, in this position right here, the, the rifle will fire three rounds and then discontinue firing. And there was a fail to eject there, but that's okay. Notice how it stopped, even though I'm still holding the trigger, it stopped firing. I have to release the trigger and pull again for it to fire three rounds. Two. And three. And it stopped. Alright, so let me show you how that works. Before we begin, I'm going to have to kind of explain to you how a semi-automatic trigger works. So what I have here is your standard um, M4 trigger group for set up for semi-automatic. You can notice that the selector here, this is the selector cam for the disconnector, is in the release position so the disconnector can move. And I'll show you that. So when I pull the trigger, you notice how there's contact we hold it with the enter key. Notice how there's contact right here between the disconnector and the hammer. This contact prevents the hammer from falling a second time during firing. So when I release the trigger, it resets back into the sear. So for every pull of the trigger, you only get one round. And you can fire as fast as you can move the trigger back and forth. This is fully legal in your standard AR-15 kit. Of course, the disconnect has a different shape instead of this little winglet here. It's just flat, and the hammer doesn't have this little shelf right here. So those are the only two differences between this set and the M4 set, and your standard AR-15 set. Um, now, I'm going to move on to full auto, and you can notice that the selector has been rotated to kind of push the disconnector down. You'll see what happens there. This right here, this part right here is the auto sear. And there's videos on how this works, but I'm going to go over it anyways. And when you pull the trigger, notice how the disconnector does not rotate, which means there's not going to be any contact, meaning that as long as the trigger is held, it'll continue firing. To prevent the hammer from falling forward with the bolts the moment it goes forward, the auto sear holds the hammer back until the bolt closes completely. As you notice, it just keeps firing and firing and firing. And it'll continue to fire until you either release the trigger, the ammunition is expended from the magazine, or you have a malfunction of some sort. When you release the trigger, the hammer falls back into the sear. Let me show you exactly how the auto sear works. When I pull the trigger, notice how it rotates back, and there's contact right here, similar to the disconnector, only on a different shelf. When the bolt closes, the rear part of the bolt carrier, on a mil-spec bolt carrier, pushes forward on the auto sear, causing it to release the hammer the moment the bolt closes. This lowers the rate of fire to just enough so that you don't fire with the bolt open, because that can be catastrophic, resulting in a in an injury or some kind of deadly malfunction of the weapon. Now, using what we learned, we can go move on to the burst. Just like on the full auto uh, mechanism, the full auto configuration, the disconnector is in the rear, but it's dis disabled by the uh, it's defeated by the selector as well. The full auto sear is still required, however, there's the addition of this new disconnector and the little cam wheel right here. And you'll notice that the cam wheel has two deep notches, 
and four shallow notches for a total of six notches, which is a, which is a multiple of three. When I pull the trigger, the, this burst disconnector is going to rotate forward, engaging in the deep notch. As it rotates back, it rotates 60 degrees, and the two shallow notches are not enough for the burst disconnection to make contact. However, on the third shot, it enters another deep notch, and the disconnector rotates forward far enough to allow itself to catch the hammer. This is the standard Eugene Stoner design for the full auto into three run burst configuration. Let's watch that again. Inside this little uh, cam wheel is a ratchet mechanism. It rotates 60 degrees with the hammer rotating backwards every time the hammer rotates. Again, it rotates into a deep notch, then a shallow notch where it doesn't have enough travel to catch the hammer like a regular disconnector would but on the third notch it's another deep notch and it rotates far enough let's watch that one more time one two three and as you can notice the auto sear is also still functioning to keep the hammer back until the bolt closes I hope that kind of summed things up. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, leave a question in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it as promptly and as accurately as I can. Um, if you want to know what program this is, this is a two-dimensional physics simulator called Algadoo. I'll have a link to where you can get that and important stuff in the description. Hopefully that cleared things up a bit because there's absolutely no videos on how the actual trigger mechanism works on a bolt, um, sorry, on a three-round burst mechanism, or at least the Eugene Stoner version. Hopefully this cleared it up, and see you later.